Hello and welcome to a very well hydrated episode of the Rooster Teeth Thursday podcast. Hi, Ashley. Cheers. Should we call this a couples counseling podcast? This might turn into couples therapy. You don't know. My God. Anyway, we want to. All kinds of hangry already. We want to thank our sponsors for the Thursday podcast. We have Boomerang, Bombas, and Link AKC. Talk more about them in a little bit. How are you doing, Ashley? I'm hungry. Are you? I'm so hungry. Should probably explain what this is, why we're well hydrated and why we're hungry. Yeah, the, neither of those things are normal for us. We're doing a whole 30 for September. So for the month of September, we're trying to eat this whole 30 diet, which consists of basically you take the food that you eat and then you remove all the fun stuff <laughs> and then you eat what's left. Basically anything that you can't pronounce, you can't eat. So Well, but it's not just that because, you know, you'd be like sort of chlorium glutamite and like, sure, you can't have that, but you also nailed it. There's, totally. yeah, uh, no sugar, like no added sugar. So you can have fruit, but you can't have like uh, you can't have honey because mm-hmm. that's basically just fruits the, pretty much it. Yeah, you can have fruit. Uh, you can. You and you can't also have, can't have any sugar substitutes. You're not because that's right. No splendas, no sping de bees, nothing no else. Spare tames. Uh, no wheat, no grains of, of any kind. That includes rice. It's a big no diet. No dairy. That's no a dairy. Huge one. And I love cheese. I know you do. I love it so much. Cheese and bread are gone. That's like literally like fifty percent of my diet. It's it cheese is and bread because all or I'll, you know. The thing is, I always get cheese, and I'm like, this is delicious. I will eat with crackers. And this was something— Now I just have fruit. We make fun of Sophie for this all the time. And Sophie was starting it. I, what happened, Ellie, what happened? She was in my office and saying she was just about to start it, and I was like— It was the day before. It yeah. was the day before, and she was like, oh, I'm, like— I think we were making a plan for lunch or something, and she was like, I can't. I'm doing Whole30. And we were both like, well, what's that? And we both decided to do it the day before she started. I mostly just see if, like— I wanted to see if I could if I could do it mm-hmm. if I could beat like beat Sophie. <laughs> well, so and then, and then you he, got on board. Bernie, well, Bernie comes home and he says, "I want to do this whole thirty thing." I said, "I support you. I'm a, I'm a there you good go. I'm a good co-op buddy. You know what? You want to do this? I will do it with you. That way we can do it together and we can support each other." And then I found out what it was. I just I want to say, look, I feel like I'm not, I'm not going to claim any responsibility for this. You're in this uh, for yourself. I, I feel like I'm tied to this. This is this is tough. This is it's all Sophie's fault. It's all. It's, it's let's all be honest. Sophie's it's fault. all Sophie's fault, yeah. right? It's pretty, yeah, pretty much everything is her fault, right? Are you gonna, but we're not doing the coconut oil in her hair or the that's alkaline water. Wait, that's we're another not, part of this. We're not gonna like. We're not doing the oil training. No activated silver treatments or anything. <laughs> Although there is part of this which what's I don't. Oil training. She doesn't wash her hair. We're oh, still, we guess she gets Sophie that, to come talk. In to that us. case, I'm like oil trained up. But we, uh, and then she which puts coconut should... oil in it like every fifth day. She talks about this. Where's Sophie? Is Sophie around? Why does she her talks hair look so nice if like she so doesn't normal. wash it and because then Because she does this in. stuff. Because so- Oh, there's so- Sophie. Sophie. Sophie, come over here. We can see you, though. Okay. Where do you want me to go? They'll, they'll guide right. you. We have professionals at work here. Welcome to the sidecar. Yeah. Hello. Sophie, Hi. what have you done? Yeah, what, are you, what have you done to us? I washed my hair today. <laughs> <laughs> so the, day, the, day five or day six? Day one. Day six. Day one. Six. What's one. oil training? There you go. Oil train, uh, you, it's like the no poo movement. What's you- the no, uh, no poo movement? That <laughs> oh, sounds terrifying. No shampoo. No shampoo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that got better the more you I'm talked so, about I'm, it. I've given up poo. Yeah, no poo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you try, try to not wash your hair so that your hair doesn't need to be shampooed. I don't know. Just, Le- you, you don't want the. You shampoo it less. Yeah. There you go. So it won't be so oily. Can you use dry shampoo? But you say so it'll be less oily, but then part of this thing is you lather your head with coconut well, oil. Well, on the last day, I put coconut oil in my hair, so that it's like a treatment. Okay, yeah. you also say the last day, but mm-hmm. really what the last day means is every fifth day. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, so it's like, you only, so oil training is washing your hair once every six days? Yeah, but I don't know. I'm, I might change how I do it. I might just stop washing my hair. All together? Yeah. Are you going to go off the grid and, like, get rid of your phone and everything else? No! And, like, wrap your head in tinfoil or anything like this, that? This is, like, a lot of people do this. It's not that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can only eat the food that you grow. So oh, no, is, no, no. I don't want to do that. <laughs> no Stop way. Um, Ellie, it's, Ashley, as you both know, we travel a lot. We go lots of different places. Like, yeah. we were all just in Las Vegas last week, which... 
I, I owe you an apology because we did this helicopter thing, but we did it. The only time we could do it was at a time when you and John had something to do, which you pretty much had to do, Ashley, the entire time you were in Las Vegas. Yeah, well, I had, uh, yeah, it was like one thing at 8 a.m., one thing at 1 p.m., and then one thing at 5 p.m. So each thing was about an hour, but it meant that I couldn't be away for any block of four hours. Uh, so. You couldn't get in an unmarked van with a dude <laughs> with a gun strapped to him and drive out to the middle of the it desert? Was, it, as much as Fun as that sounds, no. I it wasn't do. sketchy at all. Not in the least. It didn't feel weird at all. It no. wasn't like, hey, welcome to our experience. Totally Get in the van. Got, of course, we just passed out and fell asleep. Did the other thing that we did make it into the vlog? The, the I IV did stuff? Not. Yeah, we cut the IV when you, stuff. Yeah, you had a yes. big old night, and then you went and got IVs for your hangover. Yeah. Well, that I, Look, if that's not some sort of dystopian... Future Hunger Games District one shit. I don't know what it is. It definitely felt like it, it, We yeah. were both sat there and we were both like, do you feel like a terrible person yeah. right now? We were and recording like, and not were, sure Were you, you hooked up it. to like a, one of those oxygen things while you're getting your IV just to like really drive the point home? No, mm -hmm. we were on a massage chairs with blankets. We were, we, nice. They were injecting us with uh, teenagers' blood too. That's like a treatment <laughs> that they with did With the young well. mouse's blood. <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, but with Sophie, literally the only place it seems like we ever travel together is New York City, and we've, so we've been to LA. Have we? We done? What are we? Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> you took us down to the wrong, uh, <laughs> what the wrong Santa Monica. But uh, <laughs> but it seems okay. like mostly we go to New York. That seems like it. And every time we go, she, she's doing something new and and challenging. A life hack. <laughs> to say a laugh, a, a, a long term life hack. And so, <laughs> yes. but in New York, I think there's more support for this. Like she knew places we could go. So I feel like I got roped in. I got duped into doing this by you. Like a, a well, false we sense went, of security. We went to Hugh Kitchen. Yeah. That was really good, though. You really liked it. I did, and that's what I'm talking about. I got <laughs> roped into this. It goes, "This to be simple. Let's do it." But nope. Uh, the like the thing is, Austin has a wonderful food culture, but it's not exactly a health food culture sort of place. No. It's a taco place. It's a it's a like, oh, you want donuts? We made a whole restaurant out of donuts. Place. It's look at all the crazy ways we can make ice cream. Place. Yes, it's, it's true. Yeah, it's like high end fast food. We it's did find amazing. That place today, though. We went. We had a breakfast meeting at Picnic, it's which is like a Whole Thirty compliant restaurant. You're gonna yeah. be so happy. It's a. We can drive to it. It's great. Yeah, you brought me a coffee, and uh, you because you you brought it to me on Glitch, please. What was in that coffee? Though? What was in it that? Was coffee? A, I don't so even it was know. Like, it's coconut milk. Butter in the coffee? Yeah, it's coconut. They make it with coconut milk, and the flavoring was like cacao, raw cacao, and what is that? Uh, That's cayenne. made up, right? Is that like carob? No, that's cacao? what you make cacao. chocolate out of. Cacao. They make chocolate out of cocoa. They don't call it cacao. Cacao yeah. is something else. That's the fit. Isn't that? I don't know. I just know they like cacao nibs. You can. Here's buy my opinion yeah. of cacao. It's like they come out with it. It's raw, unprocessed chocolate bean, which is bitter. Yeah. They have not had time to tell you that it's bad for you. They haven't had time to figure that out yet. That's what always happens with these things. <laughs> they give you something like, oh, this is fine. This is bad, but this is fine. So stop eating that and eat this. Then two years later, like, don't eat that. That was a bad idea. That was yeah. like a, was it um, agave nectar? Aga there you go. That Everybody's was the one that came agave. out and it was like, agave nectar is amazing. It's the next it's thing. It's sugar. Needs sugar. Yeah. You don't. And then... Uh, Fast forward two years and I was like, yeah, don't, don't. We eat just that. need to accept as the human race that like sweet is not good for us. Pretty much, just yeah. eat yeah. steak all the time. <laughs> I, I, I um. brought, I brought extra steak to work today, and I have it a little cooler. And Gus the dog, who's Here's running like, around here somewhere, I hear his Gus. collar. I, yeah, yeah, I hear I can take Gus his collar. dog's off. collar. Hey jiggly. Gus, hi. Gus, uh, here, come here, Gus. Gus, uh, here. Gus hey, was eating buddy. some steak with me, and uh, <laughs> then I left an entire steak on my desk. And walk what away. happened hey, to that dog. steak? Hello, Gus. And then uh, he, didn't the dog. he didn't eat the steak on the desk. He was in the room with it and didn't eat it. So that's a good dog. Did you not eat the steak? No, oh, he's a good guy. What are you eating right now, Gus? Whatever he found around the corner. Dogs are like little kids where they just like put shit in their mouth. You know, I, yeah. dogs don't can't hold anything. But, you know, that's the one thing about little kids. It's like if you leave them alone for two seconds, they'll take whatever yeah. they have in their hand and shove it in their mouth. Or up their nose. <laughs> or in an ear. Hey, speaking of which. Uh oh Total what? tangent here. I was in the airport the other day, and they had those little uh, ball super magnets. Those, I thought those were illegal. I thought they got rid of those. Because you're not supposed to be able to use them because they might, you might swallow them yeah. and they get in on opposite sides of your intestine or something and start oh, pinching They stuff, find right? each other and pinch, yeah. And then yeah. they destroy your insides. Look at that dog. All right, that's enough with you. I you guess. Got, you're done with Gus? He's stealing all the attention. He is. Come on. Good dog. Good boy, Gus. I think the carpet's clean now. All right, well, Sophie, we are now, what, we're six days into this? Set or... What's today? Six or seven. We, started, seventh. Seventh. we started on the 7th, second. Right? Yeah, we started on the second, so we're six days in. 
But you're so, seven days in. We started okay. a little bit after you. All right. Yeah. Seven days so, in. Seven days strong. So what is day seven like? As people who are on day six, is it Day is it better? seven. Does it get easier? You get a little bit tired. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's a whole timeline. You can look it up. Really? Like, really? A lot like of it's stuff like is going to happen to you. When yeah. you're so if you send it to me today, it. it's yeah. like a whole timeline of what to expect as the days go by. Day 10, I told you, is the hump day. It's when people give up. Yeah. But you get past that. Do you get the crazy like endorphin rush that people yes. get sometimes? Yes. Really? Tiger blood. Yeah. You're supposed to become like your best you get self. You IV of tiger blood. <laughs> So this has become like a Marilyn Monroe quote, basically. My living best that. Self. So day twenty, it says, yeah. is a vision quest day. That's when you have your hallucinations and you mm, lose your no. fucking mind. Oh, but Nathan does this too, right? He's your boyfriend. Nathan does it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I was eating just like a normal person until, <laughs> <laughs> until Nathan started all of this. So he's like patient zero for this yeah. stuff. Good yeah. to know. All right. Well, we're Good gonna to go after source. him because I'm hungry and I'm angry and I'm really miss. I miss wine. Yeah. Beer, cheese. cheese, crackers. Stop uh, talking. I miss pink ice cream. <laughs> oh my god. So we uh, uh, years ago, Ellie, you said you want to do it because you were just curious if you could do it, right? Yeah. So years ago, we were listening to I think it was like the Howard Stern radio show, and David Blaine was on, and he was talking about this thing he did called the Master Cleanse, and essentially he was getting ready to like go in I don't know some kind of like clear cube in Times Square for a week, uh, and so he was preparing himself to fast for seven days. Because all he would have in there was a tube with water, and that was it. So he did this thing. Was, for like, was he being a hamster for a week? That's what he does. Like, there was one where he buried himself under the ground, and it was just like he was six feet underground. All he had was, like, a little window to look out, and people were, could walk over him and look down into it. You ever, you ever seen this, the weird, like, stunts that David Blaine does? I seem to have missed those. John, what else hey, wait, did he do? Was he in water? Yeah, it was an yeah. ice block. Is sat he ice block. the magician? He's a he's a performer. I don't know if magician's the right word for that anymore. Illusionist. Illusionist. I see. <laughs> well, there uh -huh. you go. That's what I know. Anyway, he was on Howard Stern. He was talking about to prepare for this. He did this master cleanse, which is I think you're supposed to do it for two weeks, and he did it for thirty or sixty days, where you don't eat any solid food. You just drink. It's from memory here. A combination of water, grade B maple syrup, cayenne pepper. And lemon I, juice, lemon juice, lemon juice. Yes. I know th yeah. th that thing. I know. I know that is like a is like a like juice cleanse plus. And I did it with Jeff Ramsey. We were going to see if we could do it because we had Ellie's idea of like, can we do this or not? Yeah. And uh, I went seven days, and my boss was like, said I was standing in a meeting, and I just started like rotating while standing, <laughs> like I was like this teetering, and he's like, you need to eat something right now. I went and ate those orange and peanut butter crackers. You know the orange crackers with peanut butter in them from the vending machine. Uh huh. Horrible diet. A horrible thing to eat after seven days of no food. That seems like I it almost died. Be, was, was it overwhelming or was it disgusting? It was horrible. It was like once it hit my stomach, it like just like it like rushed through my body, and as I can't describe, like my body just grabbed onto it. But Jeff, <laughs> Jeff was like, I gotta give up because I can't do this. And it was he was he was like the like three o'clock one of the days. And he's like, I'm done. I can't do it. And uh, I was like, come on, Nico, you gotta last longer than this. He goes, no, dude, <laughs> it was day one. He goes, I've been doing this for 24 hours. I go, no, no, we started at midnight last night. You've basically skipped breakfast. That's all you've done. And he was like, I can't take it. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. So he gave up immediately. I've always wanted to try, um, try it again, see if you could try it and go like 30 or 40 days without any food whatsoever. To be fair though, that juice is kind of gross. Yeah, the cayenne pepper really takes it over the top, I think. Yeah. Whole, whole 30 is not that bad, right? Well, no. Whole 30 is not that bad. No. Right? I mean, no, today, I would say after breakfast today was the first time that I felt like satiated from a meal and like, oh, that was really good and I'm full and I feel like I ate just now. <laughs> I will say this. I go into every meal starving. It's been a long time since it's like usually I eat because it's time to eat. Yeah. You know, that's one of the weirdest things about when you go into the workforce is you it's time for lunch. So you go to lunch and you just eat because that's your time to eat. This is like I need to eat food right now. I'm starving to death. Yeah. So. Valkyrie needs food badly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah, so far, so far, okay, okay. Six days into this thing, you're we'll now see. the official rep of Whole yeah, Foods. We're apparently. we'll see. We're eating a lot of potatoes <laughs> because potatoes are allowed. I eat sweet potatoes. You eat potatoes. I love potatoes. potatoes. Right. Yeah. The fact that if I couldn't have potatoes, I think I'd probably be out already. But I can have potatoes, so I have a lot of potatoes, and that's cool. So we'll see. It's also uh, I gotta admit here, it's ex it's expensive. It feels like it's not sustainable. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. like yeah. you know, honestly, everything that comes in a box is it's cheap. the cheapest yeah. thing. Yeah, and pasta like, and 
packaged foods. And bread and everything. Let's not, let's yeah. stop talking. Mm. <laughs> let's, let's stop talking mm, about bread. it right now. Hey, what Pasta. if we should do like when we're all when we're done, we should like all go and get pizza and beer together. Yeah. Uh, That'll make us all yeah. so sick. Yeah. So, but it'll Ellie, taste good at first. Ellie's like covered in bruises. She's I like, have so many bruises. Like this is my my favorite guy. This that bruise has a pattern. Face. That's the machine gun bruise. That's the machine gun bruise because apparently I messed up. And I have like bruises under my arms here from where I fell. And then this is quite an impressive one on my leg. I'm about to get more because I just did a session of Krav Maga with Eddie. And my knuckles already are like... I just bruise like a peach. This is like, I feel like I'm the perfect candidate. Well, you wounded yourself in the last like dojo that you went to. You overpunched or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that when you punch with... Because you're only supposed to punch with these knuckles. Mm -hmm. And then if you punch with these ones, they're all little and, it's and supposed to be the top busty, two. right? Most of the time you punch somebody with a bare fist, there's a good shot you're going to break your hand. It's a really good shot. Wow. I'm always surprised. Sophie um, knows about that. So, fun fact, you Sophie trained, punches people all the time. Uh, Ellie, you trained with Eddie today. Mm -hmm. He's teaching two more classes before he comes to work next. I know. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. He He's teaching a class tonight a and a class first thing in the wow. morning. He hits a lot of people. <laughs> it's amazing. I guess that's why he's, he's so cold. He's so fast. That was the thing that really, like, I mean, like, obviously super strong as well. But the way that, it, like, you would be teaching me how to... Um, if someone's like pointing a gun directly at you, how to move yourself out the way and push their hand. And he'd like he'd, he'd blink and he does it. It was crazy. And I was like, a little fumbly and rubbish. Which is funny. Like, I feel like the like Krav Maga Eddie is his superhero persona. Yeah. And he comes to work and he's mild mannered Eddie Rivas. Yeah. Like writer and overall super nerd. Yeah. Then when he leaves, he's like, got to fight crime. It's amazing. We should get him a costume. We should. <laughs> All Might from uh, My Hero Academia. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Well, I want to remind everybody if you want to talk to us on this, this is the last Thursday podcast, is that right? That we're doing? So, this is the final Thursday podcast. Yeah, ending summer, on a low note. I like it. The <laughs> summer experiment. We haven't gotten to what talk to you about this yet. So, we'll get there. But uh, thanks, Sophie and Ellie. If you want to thanks. stick around, you're more than welcome to, unless yeah. you're going to take Gus and go home. Do you but, want him? What's that? <laughs> no, he's, he's fine. Do you want to go drop up here, Gus? <laughs> Uh, I want to remind everyone that this episode of the Rushi Podcast, excuse me, is brought to you by Boomerang. Boomerang is a new subscription video app offering timeless cartoons and new original animated series. If you need some cartoon catharsis, Boomerang's got anvils falling on Wile E. Coyote's head. Classic. Tom endlessly chasing Jerry and Scooby Snacks with the Mystery Incorporated crew. You can find Boomerang on the web. Mobile, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Roku, and Chromecast. Visit boomerang.com slash promo and use the promo code rooster to start your free trial today. That's boomerang.com slash promo using the promo code rooster to get your free trial. I was like a new sponsor. The last time I was on the podcast was the first time I think I had read from Boomerang before. No, Boomerang's cool. May I have you used it? Yeah, it's uh, got lots of old cartoons. So, you know, like you and I... So what's the cartoon you watched as a kid? Uh, oh, God. And anything on that was on Nickelodeon. So I watched... It wasn't always old cartoons, but it was a lot of, like, the classic Disney Roadrunner yeah. stuff, if they if they had it. Looney uh, Tunes? Yo, so much Looney Tunes. They got Tom and Jerry, too, which Tom and Jerry I freaking love. Yeah, and then... Yeah. Uh, but I, I watched a lot of old TV series in general. It was like, uh, uh, like I Love Lucy, Green Anchors, Gilligan's Island, a lot of the stuff that was on, you know how... So you watch uh, live action shows. Uh, yeah, because you know how they had Nick at Night that was the, it was just a block of classic TV shows yeah. that they showed? I loved those. I went through a huge phase of black and white movies, and uh, I was all like, Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire are the best, and I'm going to grow up to be them. Well, and I, know, then I didn't. I mean, it's weird, because I always think about, like, when I was a kid, I would regularly watch stuff like Three Stooges and Little Rascals, and that was, like, from Little the Rascals, 20s yeah, like, think about that. That's where we were watching TV that was 40 years old. Yeah, I talked about that last time. It's crazy. <laughs> Eat this. So I'm sorry, Peter Hayes is sending animated GIFs to me. I have to say GIFs when you're in the room. Look, I'm not making you do anything. I'm doing it to be you're a good your person. Own man. What's that? Well, you're your own man. If you're going to eat 30 days of twigs and berries, you know, I can say GIF when you're around. Can we eat twigs? Uh, I, I probably eat too much. I think anytime you start anything that's like kind of, kind of like food regimen, I think you tend to do things to try to get yourself back to what you were eating and you overcompensate in that way. Like I thought, oh, this is my crutch food. Like everyone on Atkins would eat bacon nonstop, which, you know, while it's low carb is probably not the best strategy. You can also eat healthy and eat low carb. Uh, but for me, it's like I eat a lot of nuts and seeds, which are probably not the best. Thing. I know I'm finding pistachio shells all over the floor. Bullshit. Everywhere. If I you ever, are not. If I need to find 
Bernie, I follow the trail of pistachio shells. You have full permission, unless you're going to be devious about it, to, in our house, if you find a pistachio shell anywhere, put, take a picture of it, post it, and I will, you, I will give you a dollar. Roger that. One dollar. Roger that. You I'm have about not to found pistachio shells anywhere. Of course, you're going to go a bunch, shell a bunch of pistachios and scatter it for income. Oh, please. <laughs> That's a revenue generation you, model. You know. You will just stand over the counter and just start shredding them. They, there's shrapnel flying everywhere. I can do You know, I actually, I, I have peeled so many pistachios, I hurt my thumbnail. It's true. It's true. What? I just want you to realize the quality of man that you're dating that I like. You're oh. you're very delicate. I think it was like thirty pistachios <laughs> before I broke my thumb. <laughs> That's what happened. So, but you're you're happy doing this? Yeah, like trying to. Yeah, the whole it's, thing? it's nice to try and break bad habits. Mm -hmm. You know, because I I have been you know just I know I've been not eating great, and like I look in the mirror and I gain squishy weight instead of muscle weight. And then I just sort of get mad at myself, and then I get sad and go eat some potato chips. Because you're sad about the view in the mirror, and so you go and eat stuff? Yeah, so it was, um, uh, well, we've determined I, I eat because I'm unhappy, and then I'm unhappy <laughs> because I eat. What, what accent was that? Uh, well, that was just, uh, I think, a generic European accent. I'm not sure how to do it <laughs> in, a, no in, a nice, in a nice Scottish accent. But you're Scottish. Doesn't mean I can, what, so I can just, it's built into my genes, like I'm bust out a Scottish accent. You should be able to do your own accent. You're right, I was born in a tartan. What's that? I was born in a tartan. <laughs> yeah, plaid is your favorite color. But we, we've discovered something since we, we've lived together, spoiler alert, we lived together, uh, that I am really good diet-wise at making decisions in the grocery store or in a restaurant, and I'm terrible about those decisions at home. Meaning, if I'm in a grocery store and there's a box of Cheez-Its, I go, I'm not going to buy the box of Cheez-Its. And then I don't buy the box of Cheez-Its, doesn't come to the house, you know? But if there's a box of Cheez-Its in the house, I will eat 100% of them. Or I'll eat, you complain about this. In a day. I eat, like, all of them but four, and then I didn't eat all of them. Then you're like, it's not empty. <laughs> That's usually, I eat your food. That's another bad habit I have. I eat your food when you have something. Yeah, because I'm the, the opposite. I will buy anything at the store and then make it last for two months. What's the worst habit I have? Is it eating your food? Is that bad? I'm I sure think that's the stuff. one that makes me the maddest oh, because yeah. I go to eat it and then I don't have it to eat and then I'm mad because I just got happy. Yeah. Because I took it away. It's like getting the rug yes. pulled out from under you. Wow. Yeah. Well, apparently I leave pistachio shells for you to nosh on any, anywhere you go. <laughs> yeah, as long How as dare you? I never pick them up and just chew on a shell. I gotta say, I, listen, I, gotta have a, I have a bone to pick with you. I made you a lovely dinner last night. You did. It was really nice. You were wrapped up in, uh, you were playing Destiny. You were recording, you said you were recording footage of Destiny 2 for the No. Which I did. Eight hours of footage, apparently. You started at like 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. And yet, I think you came to bed at 3 in I the morning. I recorded partial part of the opening, and then I wanted to play further into the game and take some gameplay capture from different locations. So the European Dead Zone and Titan, thank you very much. Who do you think plays more video games, Miriam? Me. I think what I do is I get on one game and I play it nonstop. Until yeah, you're playing it. Seven Days to Die like constantly No, right but, but I think Battlegrounds was worse. Battlegrounds was pretty heavy, but you broke that now. But uh, yeah, I don't have to play Battlegrounds in a long time. I actually feel kind of bad about that because I feel like there was like a little bit of a turn on Battlegrounds where uh, people were like, it got kind of be cool to hate it for a while. If but, I was you, I wouldn't feel too bad about it. They just passed like 10 million, 10, 10 million owners and it, it took uh, all of the top games off Steam. Like it passed Counter-Strike and it passed Dota. I think it's going to be okay without you. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Dota. I, Can I be honest? I, mean, I know that's, that's a controversial not, thing to say because it's got a lot of fans. I just don't care about Dota. And mm. I that's fine. You don't have to care about every game. Why would you care about every game? I'm just not a MOBA person. John, are you a MOBA? You, you used to play, what, Smite, right? Yeah. That was the big MOBA that everybody was That was the was MOBA playing. I played. I, never, I tried to get into, like, Dota and League, but that was a no. I make John talk while he's adjusting his mic. That's but I, wa I want John, when he gets on mic here, I want him to talk about uh, what we're doing for Seven Days to Die. We started this um, a Twitter a project. There's a Twitter account. It's the Rooster Teeth, uh, what do we call it? RT underscore servers. RT underscore servers. No, I know you've got that Twitter account because you hooked that up. You verified that Twitter account with my phone number. Yeah. And forgot to turn off text notifications. Oh, that's right. And then tweeted out that you'd started it. I had 
hundreds of text notifications. I got <laughs> notified like the follows for and every single follow. <laughs> every single one. And just, it was hundreds over the course of, like, minutes. Yeah. yeah. And I had to, Bernie, can you please, please turn it off? My phone is dying. It is literally vibrating oh, itself to death. It? <laughs> Yeah, but so we've started this uh, Archie server, so we're we're having more gaming servers. Yeah. People like the Battlegrounds one we did. So yeah. now, I, I started it, but you took it over. We're doing a Seven Days to Die server. We have a Seven Days to Die server. It's live. It's like it's like up to day. Last time I jumped in a few days ago, it was already up to day ninety six. See, that's a tough thing about Seven okay, Days to Die. Okay, what does that mean servers. though? What does that mean with a server? Does time persist- progress as long as persists- anyone is on it? It persists it's persistent. as long as one person is in it. Is that what it is? Huh? Is that what it is? Yeah, because think, it's not... Is that how realms work, too, in Minecraft? It might. No. no? Well, I don't know, actually, oh. how realms work. But the Seven Days to Die, it's, it's because it's a dedicated server elsewhere... It's it's kind of, it's once someone logs in it goes so that's why it's up to date like we actually I jumped in with a bunch of people and jumped in a day before the next iteration of seven days yeah. and I'd never played seven days since I had that far into a game and we held up in like a mine room and I saw zombies I'd never seen before yeah it, it scales as you go further along it's like the zombies that come after you and especially these what are they blood harvest or yeah moon harvest the, whatever like the seven every day seventh is. day there's like an event that happens where it's a massive horde of all like the toughest zombies that come at you and you have to basically spend your six days preparing for that night they automatically automatically come at you as well as opposed to the other zombies which will not come at you unless they find you that's right. They'll just charge you, and they these charge ones you for are like literally just straight. sent at you. So like someone right. like sent out an evite. They it's all got mode. together and decided yes. to like move on, have a house party at your place. Yes. That's Ashley right. hates any kind of zombie games. Hates. Them. Okay, hates a strong word. Well, I just have no personal interest in playing them, and I get scared easily. So I do this. Seven days to die is a lot of um, nothing of you like doing sandbox creation stuff, and you're just mining rocks and everything, and then all of a sudden scared out of your mind by a pack of dogs rushing you from behind. Um, Which, but- I, yeah. It, it, to me, it's like, Seven Days to Die, what it does well is, it's like crafting for a purpose. Yeah. In Minecraft, you're not really crafting for any purpose whatsoever. You're just crafting to craft. Yeah, the Seven Days cycle builds that, because even though you live through the seventh day of, like, the blood moon or whatever, you then, it's going to scale in yeah. seven more days, and you have to build up to that. So, you are, you're constantly, like, Weighing how much you've prep- prepared your your house to be safe to how much you can go out and and explore for new schematics and stuff. Well, this is uh, we now have. I'm at the point in that game where I'm I'm out. There's always a moment where I set like an arbitrary goal for myself, and then when I hit it, I'm done with the game. Like that, like that's your because the game has no end, so you have to determine what your end. Yeah, is. I think for like Battlegrounds, I said I'd win five chicken dinners five nights in a row. When I do that, I'll stop. And I th- I think I said that when I hit the three in a row. So then we got to five, and I was like, all right, I'm done. I hit, I hit my arbitrary goal, which doesn't make any sense. So now I have this feeling of completion. For me, it was like I was going to try to do all the achievements in seven days tonight, but the achievement that I'm on. The wellness bro- one? Uh, the wellness one I got. Okay. So up to 200, which is a pain in the ass. It but, is. Um, I, I'm now on the one where it's travel 1,000 kilometers across everything, and I'm like 840. After playing the game for probably a couple hundred hours over the course of the last year and a half, and I'm only like 800 kilometers. So I'm like, I'm not doing... 25% of what I've already done in order to get this achievement. So That's like, like eh. 15%. But does your mo- What does that mean? 15%. Didn't you say it's a, I'm you're at like 800, 800 out of 1,000. Okay, so you're 80, so you need 20%. No, well, I need 25% of 80 Thank to make 20. You are correct. You're better at math than I am. Thanks, buddy. Wow, we just we just reinforced gender roles. <laughs> You'll be okay. You'll be okay. Uh, they... Does your moped in the game? I'm sorry, your sweet ass motorcycle. Sh- mini bike. How dare you? <laughs> it is a does mini it bike. take gas? Are you making fun of me? You play a game that you there's a cat that turns into a car. What is that stupid Persona game you're playing nonstop? Well, okay, that was Persona Five. I am no longer playing Persona Five. I beat it and saved the world. Thank you very much. I am now playing Persona We're Four all Golden. What are you playing? Persona Four Golden, and it's not a cat that turns into a car. It's a bear mascot that turns into a regular boy. You are going backwards now in this game. You're playing. Persona 4? Well, I jumped into the series on 5, and I liked it so oh much God. that I was like, well, this is on, the Persona 4 Golden's on the Vita. Here's what I'm hearing. I gotta sit through three more of these games being played in the background the whole time. Uh, no, actually, I heard that uh, Persona 3, it, like, it just shows age, and I probably don't want to do the ones before that, because oh, it's just, yeah. like, too rudimentary. Uh, however, <laughs> there is the entire Shin Megami Tensei series, which Persona is a spinoff of, that's coming to uh, Switch. There is a new Persona Q game coming to 3DS. Do you want me to continue? No, oh, yeah, I don't. and the dancing spinoffs. Dancing Moon Knight. Kyle, by dance- the way, speaking of dancing, 
Not to cut you off, do you have more on the list of no, games I'm never going to play? <laughs> Ever get a, get a whole list here for me? Look, you just don't know what it's like to be a magical schoolboy saving the world by going into TVs and cell phones. You didn't know me. You made me later in my life. I could have been a magical schoolboy <laughs> earlier in my life. But the uh, did you see that Andy got to number one on Reddit with a, des- a yeah. Destiny GIF? GIF. It was great. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to be a team player. It's a GIF. It's a GIF. No, oh, please, here we you go. Can, you can pronounce Straight it. Straight down the you rabbit hole. You can pronounce it as you like. I don't like, I don't or try to make anyone else pronounce it GIF. I just, if someone comes after me saying you're pronouncing it wrong, I tell them why I pronounce it the way that I do. I feel like you guys are coming after me for it. I'm, I'm just defending myself. I'm, 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 listen, I'm, on, I'm, look, I'm toeing the line here. I'm good. I'm pronouncing it wrong for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to be a team player. You do as you like. All right. So, where do we were you say about this? Oh, Andy got to number one on Reddit. Andy's on the yeah, he's on number one. Reddit's on uh, the gaming subreddit. Yeah, with that, uh, with him dancing and dodging bullets in Destiny. It's a pretty fantastic little seventeen second video. Oh, there it is. is. We got it, yeah. So it looks like breakdance fighting or uh, oh, what was that? Well, Gun Kata. Gun <laughs> Kata from right. uh, God. What was that? Um, the what was that movie? The, it was the Christian Bale one. Yeah. And Have you played Destiny two? No, I'm PC, so I'm waiting for October. Uh, see, I'm I'm the same way. She, uh, Ashley, you work at a division of the company called the No, which knows hey, I do a too. lot about video games. So does John Reisinger works here. So explain to me what is the cross platform thing with Destiny? It's like if I have it on the it Xbox, it doesn't exist. Yeah, at all. It no. doesn't exist. Which actually I was happy about because I was worried that with the cross platform and PC coming out a month and a half later, then everybody who's on console has all this time to build up their power level, and yeah. then when I get in October, they'll be like. I'll be just a baby. Yeah, but there she was says a, not. No, there was a rumor uh, that the PS4 and PC version, you'd be able to take your character across. Not that you could cross play. So if you were on PC, you couldn't play with PS4 gotcha. people, but you could take your character and then, you know, play b- with your between PC the buddies. Two. Uh, that, and that was actually one of the reasons that I ended up getting the PS4 version. The other uh, reason being that we have a PS4 Pro at home and I wanted it to be really pretty. And uh, we don't have an Xbox One X yet. So, uh, by the way, I pre ordered one. Did, I pre-ordered one. Come on, we gotta talk through this stuff. <laughs> what are we doing? Well, now we're gonna have a bedroom one and a living room one. Yeah. All right. I don't see a problem with this, but um, uh, so I wanted it to look really nice, so I got the PS4 version, and my intention was, uh, I know that like I figured Teddy and JD would want to eventually play on the PC version, and I was like, I'll just get all you know cool like max levels and stuff, and then be able to help like boost everyone and and like power level everyone up. And now I will not be that hero. I will be a scrub like everyone else on PC. Yeah, well, everyone's gonna start off as a scrub. That's whole yeah. Point. You can power up with us. Because I didn't play the first one. Do I have? It really to? doesn't matter where you are relative <laughs> to everyone else either. It just matters where you are relative to your own friends. Yeah, like in your fire team and people that you raid with and things like that. So, who's your fire team? We got. Is that John? a thing? You got friends? Is that a thing? You got like two friends you hang out and play with Destiny with? I've never played Destiny before. Oh, really? Never? Because because it, it was always on console. It's like bowling night. Um, and I and I don't really game on console. I have an Xbox One at home, but I don't really play on it ever. Wow, what a fucking hipster! Look at um, you. Making the rest. Does of the that show make back. me a hipster? I don't know. <laughs> By the way, Thomas Corey. On uh, Twitter, wanted you all to know that the movie that you were talking about, Equilibrium. Yes. Equilibrium. With, I love uh, that movie. That's the one where they don't. Sean Bean in the first five seconds. Of course they get. <laughs> That's the one where they don't. They don't feel anything, and they they, the they take yeah they take medicine to not feel because they decided that feeling is what made war, and so now they just don't feel, and everything is peaceful and normal, and they burn books and painting and art and anything that might make people feel, and then it turns out there's an underground who's intent on saving feelings. But Gunkata's awesome. You know what they don't burn in that movie? Really cool socks. Hey, how often do you think about your socks? If you're like I used to be, not much. But we recently, excuse me, we recently discovered socks that change the way that we'll think about socks forever. They're called Bombas. Bombas are the most comfortable socks in the history of feet. Made from premium cotton, Bombas stay warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And every pair comes with a built-in blister tab. Innovative arch support, stay-up technology, and a seamless toe. With many colors, patterns, lengths, and styles, Bombas look great in the gym, at the office, and out on the town. Bombas are what feet daydream about. And for every Bombas purchase you make, Bombas donates a pair to someone in need. Oh, that's really cool. Keep cool, keep comfortable, and keep contributing with the best socks in the history of feet. 
Bombas. Buy one pair or four at bombas.com slash Rooster Teeth today and get 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash Rooster Teeth for 20% off bombas.com slash Rooster Teeth. So that's really cool. You buy a pair of socks and they donate a pair of socks. Yeah, fun fact, I have a bunch of Bombas at home. Really? Mm-hmm. You hoarding the Bombas? I'm hoarding the Bombas. Wow. Yeah. Not sharing the wealth? They did, uh, they did a no sponsorship and uh, I got socks and I really like the socks. I'm, I'm, pick, big, I'm picky about my socks. I became a sock person. I'm not wearing good socks today. I'm wearing like short socks today. So well, wow. they have they have uh, no show socks, and they've also got ones. I've got boat shoes that are uh, like I always have trouble finding socks for because the don't socks have a boat. always. Do you have a boat? I don't have a boat. I'm lying with my shoes <laughs> you, on a daily basis. You're a poser. You're a boat poser. <laughs> well, look, it's no vlog yacht. Is there anything I don't know about you? You think? Sure. Like if, if like you find out that you had a boat, and that would be a surprise to me. Well, I, that would be, I would be impressed with myself for managing to keep an entire boat hidden. I'm not sure what the purpose of hiding a whole boat. What do you think is the most, the biggest thing about you that I don't know? I'm not like skeletons in the closet stuff, because I'm sure there's plenty of those. When I was in eighth grade, I wrote a writing contest. I wrote that a, a girl got sucked into a game and died. And what happened? She died in real life. So <laughs> She wrote The Matrix in eighth grade? <laughs> well, sort of, except she just like... Got such in the community, like she she just disappeared, not just like body drops to the ground, just like she disappeared into the computer and then died. Did you win the writing contest? I did. Really? I would love. I don't. So and it got. We had like a junior high school, you know, literary magazine thing, uh, and it got published in that. And I have no idea where that is. I would love to find it and read just how terrible it is. Really? Yes. Yeah. So did that really happen? The girl? Did you make it up? Of what? So you're basically a liar, basically. <laughs> you're, a, you're a little eighth grade liar is what I'm hearing in all Oh, this. yeah. You're just lucky in that one there was no dragon involved. Man, I got super into dragons. That was how I... Did uh, you? I Yeah. Was it like a sexual thing? Like, I always think of like when girls what? were super into horses, I was like... I evolved from a horse girl into a dragon girl. Well, it's a natural progression, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you start off loving horses? What is it with girls loving horses? What is the story with that? Um. I mean, horses are pretty cool, but... Let's not go crazy. My grandma had a horse and it let me ride it and feed it and go blump, 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 blump and eat out of my hands. <laughs> and, you know, I would, you know, it was gigantic and majestic and I read Black Beauty. You learned to love it? Yeah. And my friend Flicka, actually my friend Flicka, I was, um. Wait a minute, is that I a book know. or do you have a friend named Flicka? That's a book. Okay. Uh, but no, I was just such a like know-it-all little fucking nerd in elementary school. My fourth grade teacher bet me I couldn't read this um, My Friend Flick. It was like a 400 page book, which for a fourth grader is a lot of pages. Yeah. And uh, she bet me I couldn't read it in a week and I totally did and I showed her and I was just sure she was like, great. Good, good for you. And I was like, I did it. You don't think I could do it? I did it. She's and like, then I really liked horses. <laughs> you, 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 uh, you cursed yourself. Oh like, yeah. Like, the, uh, so one of the things. What that do I not know about you? Um, well, I didn't lie to get into E3. I mean, I made a shitty website, but it was a real so website. So did I. Yeah, but you made up your website to get into so E3. So did you! No, it's a, it was the thing. It was, you made yours to get free games! Well, that's the thing. Did your website have actual content, or did you fake the content to then get into E3? How do you fake the content? No, it had actual content. Oh, really? Yeah. Is this your shadow run thing? Was it Shadow Bane? Shadow Bane. Shadow Bane, But sorry. before Shadow Bane, I did, uh, Explain this real quick. So to get in your first E3... You I made a website. Made a website. I thought you faked a website. I thought you faked your credentials. No, I made an entire website. In fact, I used it as like it was also uh, like a like an exercise. Uh, I was teaching myself different programming languages, and that website. I think I was teaching myself. I was doing Perl at that point, so I was teaching myself Perl, and I was made a website and databases like to in, like integrate the data SQL databases and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and so it was a project of learning. Like I would like to do this. I don't know how. I shall learn how to do this and immediately implement it. So it was also that kind of project. And uh, I made well, my very first site was like I just did one fan site for American McGee's Alice, and then people liked it and said, "Do one for this and this and this." And so I did a couple of them. And then I just built like a general gaming website. It didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's how I got into E3. Got into E3. And from there, like what was the path to becoming a frag doll? Uh, so was that I. Related? No, it, that wasn't really super related, except that I did end up having a fan site for Shadowbane and playing in the beta for that. And then some of the developers for that, because it was published by Ubisoft, told me that Ubisoft was casting 
for frag dolls. Okay. And so then I submitted an application for that. Was casting the right word? Is that what they were doing? Like yes. Thing? It was casting because you can't ask for headshots or photos in a normal job application. Oh, that's really interesting. I never thought about that yeah. before. So it was, um, it's, if you ask for anything, like, appearance-wise, it has to be a casting. Really? You can't ask for that, huh? They ask for your Discrimination. ID. That's good. Again. But casting is totally cool to be discriminatory, I guess. Absolutely. I guess so. I guess it's okay to discriminate in that regard. So was it, like... When you were a teenager starting off in all this, obviously when Frag Dolls took it to a different level, but was, was being a pretty girl who plays video games, was this an enormously valuable thing for you growing up? Or were you like oh God, no. reviled nerd? <laughs> like God, no. I was trying so hard to make friends. In, uh, in high school, a bunch of uh, the dudes in my JavaScript class, this is how clueless I was. Okay, wait, see I where took, this story goes. I took a Java class because I couldn't find JavaScript on the... Uh, like on the syllabus, I would, like I took HTML to learn how to do basic websites and stuff, and yeah. I couldn't find JavaScript, so I took a Java class. Turns out they're not the same thing. Yep. Just so you know, uh, was completely useless in it. But a bunch of the dudes in the class, they were all playing StarCraft, and I was like, I don't have StarCraft, but I do have a space game called Homeworld. I'm gonna install that on the computers, and so I basically played Homeworld in class. Really? Yeah. Where's the teacher during all this? I, they were the teacher was for that class was absolutely useless completely absent was just here's a bunch of exercises go through type this in here and do this and it was just a list of basically told you step by step by step how to complete these exercises i feel like every computer class early on was like it was you kind of did busy work until you just all broke down and played games pretty, of some, yeah of some much. kind yeah fun fact those guys never liked me why not what happened I don't know, because I was playing Homeworld instead of StarCraft, and they didn't give a shit. Really? Yeah. That makes my, me mad. My very first gaming friend is I had a, a holiday job at, uh, it was, I, I think it was called Media Play. Like, one of those, like, old, you know, media stores that had, like, a book section, and here's a DVD section, and a music section. They had a game section. And so I got a part-time, like, a holiday job in the gaming section of that store. That's the closest I ever got. I always aspired to work somewhere really awesome like Babbage's. Yeah, I worked but, at Babbage's. Yeah, there you go. You're one you of could cool check ones. Out, you could check out video games and take them home. That's what? I, I couldn't know. do that. Listen, I don't want to brag. <sighs> but cool. um, I, one of the guys that worked there was my friend and then it introduced me to... Who's this like, guy? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, go ahead. I, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I introduced me to another friend who introduced me to another friend who introduced me to another friend. And that's sort of like how I built a circle of friends. I didn't go to school with any, like, no one I went to school with I played games with. Really? It was a real tragedy. With what? the exception of, you know, like in fifth grade with, you know, over at my friend's house playing on her Nintendo brother's the... Super Nintendo kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. It was, uh, uh, I mean, it was when I was. In like seventh grade, I was playing Ultima games. It was we were there was like four of us in the corner of the cafeteria that would talk about it in very hushed tones. We wouldn't like we wouldn't raise our voice over a certain level. It's kind of cool how far everything's come. I mean, it's like then you got uh, cast as a frag doll. How long did you do that? It seemed like you did it for a long time, but it really wasn't that. It long. It wasn't that long. Uh, it was four years. Were you so the first I one to leave? It. No. Oh God, no. Uh, there. So I started two thousand four, and um, our um, first frag doll to leave was Cat Hunter. Oh, right. And that was after like, uh, like maybe five or six months. She just she didn't want to do the competitive thing, uh -huh. uh, and went off to community thing, and is now married to Chris Betson. Yeah, what is he, creative director for Blizzard? Like, yeah, uh, like the the lead creative on the uh, Warcraft franchises. Yeah, and they seem very very happy. Yeah. Uh, so she was the first one to. Did lead. he retire though? What did he retire? Anyway, go ahead. I'll I look it up. Think, I should know that. I off think the top so. Of my head. Yes. Yeah. I think he said he wanted to you know spend time with family and stuff. But, uh, yeah, so I was there for four years. I was far from the first to leave. And then uh, went off to Australia. Then you went off to Australia. Worked for X Xbox in Australia. Mm -hmm. And we're there, what? That's where we met. You yeah. You worked there for four years, right? Yep. Four years? Yeah, so I was um, Australia 2008, 2012. Moved back 2012. Uh, and then uh, started dating this dude, like, two weeks after I moved back. And uh, eventually left my job for him. Let me, what, okay, explain that. That you make that sound like I like forced you to leave your job. No, 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 no. I, that, that was, I brought that up. Remember when I was visiting? We had a rule. We were long distance. We had a rule. We, we could only go two weeks apart. Like every second weekend we had to see each other. And we dated in Borderlands 2. Yeah, we played a lot of Borderlands 2 together as at the time. As our date game. Yeah. I was like homeless at the time. I was renting different places, like bouncing from place to place. 
the uh, I went like a year with no house, basically. And then uh, you you ended up at IGN. And what was your job at IGN? Um, I was the head of social and community. And you just so, come from a community gig in Australia. Your last job there was for Hawken, right? Um, yeah. So um, immediately after Microsoft, I there was a very brief stint working on Hawken, and then. Um, wasn't really feeling that, and then IGN headhunted me. Oh, okay. So and brought you over from Australia. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things I don't know if we can even talk about this, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. Okay. Is when you moved from Aust- or from San Francisco to Austin, uh, you had been paid a relocation bonus to move all the way from Australia. Yeah. And I had we had to, we had to pay back half of that. So you had to ransom me. I did. It was like paying a dowry. A dowry. To my company. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, so I'm still bitter about it. <laughs> had to pay had to pay him some money back. But uh and then you can work here. So this is something I think that I, I hesitate to bring this up, but I feel like, you know, if we're talking about stuff, we should talk about this. Okay. Which is I think that you have I think you have had had to deal with things over the over the last year few years that you've worked at Rooster Teeth where it's like because we're dating, there's like I think there's sometimes the impression from the audience that like you have have the stuff that you've built or the stuff that you've built is because you're dating me. Do you get that sometimes? When in reality, it's like completely the opposite. Do you think that like dating me is holding you back at this company? Uh, no, it just, it changes things. Like we're really careful to ab- about uh, like there are specific things that like we don't involve each other in. Like I, you and I are not involved work-wise. Yeah. And, well, we did the GameStop event together, but kind of. But know? that was different. Like that was uh, that was GameStop uh, came and said, you know, we'd love for you to do this hosting thing, which was really just like giving away stuff between um, between their uh, conference sessions, and uh, and you were actually hosting the show, and those were it was a better through job. Rooster Teeth. I had a better job. Yours was, was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yours was pretty cool. I'm, I mean, look, that's not a competition. I, look, I, I don't want to criticize you or anything, <laughs> but uh, I just want to tell you that, uh, like, Kevin Pereira had, like, a confetti machine. How like, dare you? How dare you compare me to Kevin Pereira? How dare you? In Dude, public. He, I didn't realize how self-deprecating he is. I love it. Yeah, isn't he great? Let's talk about Kevin Pereira more. Had, Why don't we do that? Why don't we just spend, like, 20 minutes talking about Kevin Pereira? We could do that if you want. Do you want to talk, <laughs> no, spend 20 no, minutes I talking really about Kevin Pereira? I really don't. <laughs> I, I neither want to nor don't want to. So I'm... I'm Dead neutral on the Kevin Pereira discussion. I'm just uh, giving you a hard time. Yeah, but that did come to us totally independently. I actually didn't know you were doing Lovely the GameStop man. conference at first, and you didn't know I was doing the GameStop conference at first. No, I didn't know, we didn't know that. They they cast us individually yeah. in, that, in that thing. But it was happy because then we get to go to Vegas, and we're there together. It was fun. Wow. I It's weird going to Vegas for... I actually liked, honestly, going as a work thing because I don't gamble. Uh, and I, I don't gamble well. <laughs> so, it's kind of the same boat. You gamble enthusiastically, and that counts for a lot. I don't know. I, lo- I lose patience with it so fast. It's like, I, if I lose $10 for nothing, it's like, that's just like cuts to the core of me. I'm just like, I just wasted $10. And it's just like, there's people who do that for hours. It's like, I can't handle it. I can't handle it, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I just, I just like, I, I don't really get into it, so I just skip it entirely. So, for me, the appeal of Vegas is the shows. I really like the shows and the food. And so, the food. And what? And the food, which we were eating when we were there. And then yes. we stopped eating regular good food. I miss the food. I have a steak in my office unless Gus the dog is eating it. So, if Although Gus I do the like the idea of Gus dog. Sirola walking to my office and just eating a steak that's on my desk. Uh, well, for the podcast, you panicked. You said, I was eating a steak with Gus. And I thought, <laughs> what? I did, Gus, I, Gus isn't even here. Did he come into the office to eat steak with you? I did have a steak panic moment today. Hey, I feel bad because I'm wearing a t-shirt on this with you. And I was like, I went to pack a different shirt to wear for the podcast. And it didn't make it in the car today. So well, why aren't you more stylish? I know. I just feel. I feel, I feel bad. I feel like. I, I feel like. I. I dress down for your one-on-one podcast, and I, that that doesn't feel right to me. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's really. That's very nice of you. If it makes you feel better, I forgot we were doing a podcast, and I just wore All this. Right. Don't have to. You don't. You know. You can just say things. You don't have to like keep going on things. You know? <laughs> Okay, I want to remind everyone that this episode of the podcast is also sponsored by Link AKC. Everybody knows how much Gus loves his dogs, Oswald and Benjamin. Gus was telling me that he was on the lookout for cool functional accessories for his dogs, and he came across this awesome new collar called Link AKC. And it's not just a collar. 
Backed by the American Kennel Club, the Link AKC Collar is a GPS locator, fitness tracker, and more. All controlled through a smartphone app. I bet Gus loves that. And because he's basically obsessed with his dogs, Gus loves the GPS locator. Uh Uh-huh. Because it tells him exactly where his dogs are. There's no more, did they get out of the yard? Did the dog walker take them where they're supposed to go? You can see exactly where your dog is at all times right on the app. It's complete peace of mind for dog owners. Gus's other favorite part is the activity and wellness tracker. It doesn't matter how old your dog is or what kind of dog it is. Link AKC shows the exact amount of activity every dog needs. You know what? They should make this for cats. Cat. I don't know what a fitness tracker would look like for a cat, but it would be... Flatline, probably. Pretty much, yeah, just flat with a couple little bumps here and there. Everyone who sees it loves it. It's easy to set up with sizes for every dog. It even won the CES Best of Innovation Award in 2017. Link AKC is a super comfortable and... Excuse me. Link AKC is super comfortable and looks great on Oswald and Benjamin. They're handsome dogs, though, so... A lot of things look good on them. Keeping your dog safe, happy, and healthy just got even easier with this special offer from Link AKC. Go to linkakc.com and use code ROOSTERTEETH to save 30% on your order with free shipping. That's code ROOSTERTEETH, this company, to save 30% on your order with free shipping at linkakc.com. Linkakc.com slash ROOSTERTEETH. Thank you, Link AKC, for supporting the podcast. So, you know what? This would have actually been... You know, a thing that a friend of mine could have used because I had a friend who lost a dog during Hurricane Harvey. No, yeah. and we what lost we, we lost Joe. Well, you know, animals can panic during stuff, and they they hadn't evacuated, but they just the the dog got out because of just you know, I guess I guess they can sense stuff, and it's like man, if they just had a GPS locator, though, they could find it. I actually have. Do you think animals think humans are weird? Like the like dude, animals, there's, a, yeah. here, there's like an earthquake coming or something. You see all the animals start freaking out. They know something's coming. Do you think they were like? Hey, dummy, why are you like, why are you not reacting to this? Well, don't say that because we have two cats and cats are great because you'll be sitting there. It's like one in the morning. You're in like reading a book or playing a game or something like that. The cat's next to you. It's completely dark in the house. And then the cat just does this and then runs. And it's like, what the hell did the cat see? And it's like, I'm sure the cat's like, did you not see that specter or whatever that walked by and takes off? And you're like, just sitting there like a dope reading your book, you know? One of my favorite uh, things in fiction is the way different stories will address something like that. Like, what is it that cats see? Oh, yeah. Are they seeing ghosts? Are they seeing another dimension? Are they seeing some sort, like some form of living being that only exists as Vapor? Or they're just freaked out all the time. I mean, they're cats. Listen, since we're keeping score today. Are we keeping score? It, my cat's better than your cat, right? I like Nutmeg a lot, but Joe's like overall better cat. Nutmeg's uh, getting to be a good cat. Joe the cat is a wonderful cat for everyone. I appreciate that Nutmeg... <laughs> what is this? I appreciate that Nutmeg loves me the absolute most and the like I'm the center point of her life. And how do you, you feel about Troy Baker? You. Troy Baker was the second day host. How does it? How do we rank? Because it was me and then Troy Baker and then Ken Brer. So it clearly the out. ranking is Ken Brer is above me in the ranking. Clearly that's been established. Well, I mean, he had a confetti cannon. I'm just saying. I hope that's not a euphemism. What, what, go ahead. Did, what did what did you do for your keynote? Did you have a confetti cannon? I was very personable. Smoke machines? <laughs> no, I didn't know I had a budget for that stuff. Apparently. I was personable. I entertained the crowd. We had a wonderful time. T-shirt cannon? Uh, listen, I went first too. Those guys, I got to warm up that audience like for a full day before. Troy Baker. No, and Troy Ken Baker Pereira was really waltzed their pretty asses in there and just decided to just blow off confetti cannons. Apparently, yes. Yeah, so it turns out Troy Baker is actually a voice actor in Persona Four, which I'm playing right now. It's a. It was a cool thing to learn. He plays Kanji. Uh, kan- Kanji Tatsumi. No, Kanji. Whatever. You know, I do voice acting. I don't know if you know Red versus Blue, Ruby. I don't know if you've seen those. Those are pretty good. Just saying. <laughs> I saw. I found some out on the last trip. Uh, that I took out to LA, uh, which was really surprising. Hannah Hart, who I don't associate as being a gamer at all, enormous Last of Us fan. Absolutely loves Last of Us. I feel like The Last of Us is the kind of game that a lot of people who aren't hardcore gamers can enjoy. Yeah. Because it is, it's a very, it's a very tightly focused experience. You can play through it and then it ends and you don't have to commit hundreds of hours to enjoying it. But it will tell you a lovely story. You'll have a like a great time while you're playing it, and then you know, and it 
like doesn't ask the world of you. Also, for someone like you who doesn't like zombie games or horror games, it's which still it, zombies. It's There's still of, zombies. It, oh, I mean, everything's a zombie. That's what I say. Don't don't split hairs about that. But it's clearly a zombie game. You would not play it on your own, but you did a thing where you watched all the cutscenes with me like a movie after I finished the game, and I had a great time watching it. There was really only one part of the story that was uh, not told in the cutscenes. It's uh, when Joel gets hurt, not to spoil anything, but yeah, it was actually it was pretty cohesive. Like I could get a really good idea of what was going on and, and going through it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Last of Us two, but I didn't hear anything about E three. How about you, Mrs. In the Know? Did, what when, when is Last of Us two coming out? When it's ready. Yeah. Naughty dog. Right. I mean, the, I think the emphasis right now is elsewhere. <laughs> the, 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 now, now the internet Twitter is busy ranking me in the Troy Baker, Kevin Pereira world. So I'm, uh, I don't, I don't how are you, how I'm are off you the do- internet. How are you doing? It's like a Game of Thrones night. I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. Well, anything else you want to talk about? We're, we're getting close to the end here. Um, let's see. Any uh, grievances that you want to air? Anything you're upset besides obviously pistachio shells? By the way, that makes us seem so lame. If that's like the worst, we're fighting com- about pistachio shells. If that's shells? your worst complaint about me, this is pistachio shells, then the, I'm, I'm either doing something right or just something completely wrong. Uh, I mean, uh, what else can I? What else am I angry about? Uh, sometimes <laughs> after you go to the bathroom, you leave the bathroom light on but close the door, so I don't know if someone's in there. And sometimes I really have to go, and then I have to go find another bathroom, and that takes me like an extra ten seconds. Really. It's a real problem. This never came up before. I, I thought we were airing new grievances. It's a new thing. I mean, it's just like it's a, you could have mentioned this at any point in time, and I would just turn off the light. I mean, I should turn off the lights anyway. It's Con- consider it mentioned. <laughs> it's environmentally sound. Also, please leave the uh, just the toilet seat, not the whole lid, but the seat down, so that the cats can get in in case of emergency. The cats can get on the the rim of the ceramic. And they don't do like it. getting their paws dirty. Get out of here. How do you know this? <laughs> so you're having a conference with the cats, like a performance review? Yeah, like, no, Meg. She's a Siamese, and she's really prissy, and she'll sit in front. If the whole seat's up, she'll sit in front of the toilet and meow sadly. But if the seat's down, she will get up there, and she will drink out of the toilet to her heart's content, which is disgusting. But I also acknowledge that if she looks her own butthole, she'll probably be fine. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. That, that people get upset when animals do that. I don't worry about that at all. I, mean, I just think I'm I, not going to do it. I, I just want them to drink water of some kind. Yeah, and also not. So let me ask you a question. So Ashley, uh, we lost our fish. Uh, that we we got these fish with the house. They came with the house. We inherited fish. We inherited fish, and we took care of these fish. Totally not our fault. The fish died because somebody tried to do something to help the fish, and they made a mistake. And we still haven't figured out who who did this. Yeah. Um, they filled the the pond back up with uh, like tap water, and then left it running. So it replaced all the treated water. With tap water, which fish don't like tap water, and they ended up dying. It's I don't think that they died of not liking it. I think they died of their gills burning from oh, chlorine. That's horrible. Don't say that. So uh, as a result of that, we buried our fish. Then the fish got unburied by something, and it ate them. Something big. Yeah. Something big. Something that could move the stones we put I over think it. it was our next door neighbor. He's suspect. I'll talk to you about <laughs> that off the air. Okay. But uh, the um, then we went out and we bought. Instead of three big fish, we have 30 little goldfish. Mm -hmm. And I could see on the security cameras the other day that a raccoon was eating the fish out of the pond. He was, he was, wait, no, the raccoon was eating the fish? He was going for him. He was going for him. I don't want to, like, you know, I don't want to assume gender on the raccoon, but let's just, it's a guy for the sake of the story. This, the raccoon he's eating, yeah, he's eating these fish out of the pond. He's, he's fishing. He's doing the the raccoon thing. He could be washing something because they do that. What dishes? What the little wash band is over there? I, you know they wash stuff. Haven't you ever seen the video with the the uh, rec? Is it a rec? Yeah, it's a raccoon. It's like washing stuff, and then it grabs some cotton candy and it goes to wash it. The- I have seen the cotton candy disappear, and I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, raccoons are. That raccoon had it coming, especially if it was eating a little fish beforehand. But you're taking good care of the fish. I'm but trying to. I got to point out, we had fish before. You feed those fish every three days. That was the previous fish. Current fish, we had to feed every day. We well, you're supposed to feed them every day. If you go on vacation, they will be fine without food for a couple of days. I, yeah, They're but, like cats now. We feed our cats now every day. Now the fish are like now oh, the fish are like the, cats. Uh, so here's the, here's the what is that? That's not actually cotton candy. It is That's, cotton candy. Is it? Yeah. It looks just like a square block. Oh my god! Looks something like the confusion and now it's a, on its now face. it's a sad trash panda. And you know what? If it's a fish eating trash panda, it deserves to be a little bit sad. There's a follow up video to that where they they got the raccoon some cotton candy and just ate it. 
Oh. They, I guess they gave it to her. I guess raccoons will wash stuff when they're not around. So I don't know. We'll see. But you are going somewhere with this fish story. I'm just saying, why do we upgrade to fish that require to be fed every day? Like, are, we're busy people. We should make better decisions in this. I, don't get me wrong. I like the fish. And you know there's one fish in particular that I like. You like Joe the fish. I like Joe the fish. Yeah, we have one fish with its orange and it's got a white belly. And so we named it Joe the fish. And I was afraid that the raccoon was going to eat Joe the fish. But Joe the fish is fine. And, and yeah, but it's like it's we're gonna mess this up. I was already so no, like, I had so much anxiety Bernie, about the Bernie, three fish. I need you to not stress out about the fish. For one, with the exception of this morning, you have not had to feed those fish once. I feed them every single time, and I looked on the internet, which is a very credible place uh, for information, and it said that it, they can go several days without food if necessary. It's not preferable. So Stay off the internet. I'm trying to. I'm trying Stay to the fatten them up a little bit, and you know, like make sure that they have their nice regular diets, so that if we have to go on vacation and they miss a feeding or two, they will be totally fine. This is a grievance I have with you. You just reminded me of it. You say you you're acting like I didn't. I don't feed the fish. You feed the fish every day, and I appreciate that you do that. I also, by the way, what are you making the face for? I for cook it? all the time in our house. Like I cooked you dinner last night. You I did, cooked you and a it was very delicious. elaborate dinner, and I thank you for it and cleaned up. How? No, not really. Did you? You did. You did. You did. You did. How but dare I, did you? Did you sir? notice how I plated your food? It was with, you. You yeah. The zucchinis made a nice little half moon. I absolutely noticed with the that. potatoes inside the half moon. It was moon. lovely. It was no comments about it at all. You just literally just like sat down, like you put one hand on the uh, like the opposite side of the plate, like you just got back to the army barracks, and you're like nom 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 <laughs> eating your food. You were so hungry by the time you got to dinner. You didn't make a single comment about it. You just started like tucked in. I thank you for making dinner. How dare you? You did th- you, you like five minutes into dinner. You thanked me for making dinner. I was very hungry initially. Sometimes you have no room for anything but the food. I should have. And plus you had to walk over so many pistachio shells apparently to get to the dinner table. It's true. You could hear them crackling. We'll go home right now and we'll take a look at the kitchen floor. There's no pistachio shells. That's because the Roomba goes at 2 p.m. Bernie. I don't don't think the Roomba can pick up. Give it an hour after you get home and there will be pistachio shells all over the floor. By the way, of all the things like I like automation and like lights and all that stuff. I like to have everything in the house. I even got our sprinklers now where I can run it off my smartphone. I gotta say, I gotta say. The stupidest thing we have is a Roomba. The Roomba is the dumbest thing we have. It's it, so dumb. And so many people have these Roombas, and it's just like, the thing is dumb. And it just like, it gets jammed places, and it's always gone missing. Like, we have to go on a hunt for this thing when it's it's It manages itself. to lock itself in the bathroom constantly. Constantly. Yeah. Uh, it will, it manages to get itself all tangled up in cables, and then it just dies. <laughs> It'll chime sadly for a while. <laughs> and then die. Yeah. Uh, we we lost it for several weeks. I think under a couch. It was in. The, it went into the guest bedroom. Went under the bed. Yeah. There Which is a, like a barrier that it's never supposed to go past. It's it's the dumbest robot we've got. Yeah. And well, we've got a lot of robots. We do. We have a lot of robots. Well, you know, we've got we've got uh, an Alexa. In does a it bother of you that rooms. Alexa likes me more than Alexa likes you? Bothers Sorry, me. everyone who's listening to the podcast, and your Alexas are now going it, crazy. It, it bothers me a little bit. Hold on. Alexa, Simon says, Bernie smells like poop. Alexa, subscribe to Kevin Pereira on Twitch. <laughs> the, you know, I, I think that, like, when I listen to you, I feel bad how Alexa never, ever, ever listens to you the first time. She really doesn't. And then I try to help out and butt in, but then you're, like, talking over the top of each other, and that's even worse. Yeah, for whatever reason, Alexa does not like either it's like my my tone of voice. Maybe she just doesn't like my attitude. I'm really not sure what it is. I try and be polite. I say thank you when I ask Alexa for things. And and she just won't she won't listen. She just does not like me. Bitch got a grudge. You know, does it bother you when people don't in this day and age don't understand the etiquette of voice recognition? When you start talking to a computer and they don't get quiet, like they just continue to talk over the, you know, top, like saying whatever they're going to say. You like, mm. yeah, it's talking like, to the robot right now. Yeah, the robot needs my attention at the moment. I have to speak to the robot. You know who did that to me <laughs> recently is uh, Kib from Sugar Pine Seven. Who there might be something a little with Kib. I'm not sure. It's not even a real name. I don't even know what's going on there. But he's he likes cars. He's a car person. And so I was trying to show him how I had hooked up one of the cars to the Alexa, which is, like, very cool. And he goes, he goes how does it work? And I say, here, here, let me show you. I said, Alexa, ask my car. He goes, so you can just tell it what to do? And I'm like, yeah, okay. And then he goes, I didn't understand. He goes, oh, uh, it doesn't work. I go, well, hold on a second. And I go, Alexa, ask my car. He goes, can you just ask it anything? And I'm like, dude. And it's like, and then it said, I didn't understand. He goes, he goes, uh, 
I guess it doesn't work that well. <laughs> he walked out. I was like, I was like, you jackass. You talked over every time you, I was you talking got, to Alexa. I think you kind of got trolled. Yeah, I think I did a little. I can never tell with them. I can never tell with them. I'm, I I'm think, a little I concerned. Think when in doubt, assume they're trolling you. Yeah. Right. All right. Trying to knock me down a peg. Trying to nag I mean, me. Like you think you think with that headband, he's not trolling. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you might have the perfect picture of Kib exactly. to put up. That, that's it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So he was he was he was remarkably unimpressed by my Alexa integration. All right. Anything else you want to discuss? Robots are the worst. Robots are the worst. This is, this is your chance. You can ambush me with anything at all. Uh, I, look, I don't come up with crazy things to ambush you with on the podcast, but if you want to uh, get ambushed about anything... We want to thank you for watching the I remember the you podcast. came after me. You were upset that uh, I changed the pin code on my phone. You changed yours. I did. It's retaliatory. Why? Why did you change your code on your phone? What happened? What's going on? Because I took it to the Apple store and it, they re and came back and it would defaults to six digits and I didn't care enough to change it to four, so I just added two zeros it's to it. It's all mysterious. It's all mysterious. It's all mysterious. <laughs> I just wondered if like there was like you were upset with me because I just like and I didn't know. I felt like I'm in your phone all the time. It's just like there was the thing where I needed to use a phone. Yours was nearby, so I was like, oh, I'll just use the code. No, you can't do that. It's uh -huh. like, so I what happened was. How, Are long, you trying to how long have I been outside the circle of trust? Because I just found out at that moment. When's the last time I broke my phone? A couple months ago? Why are you breaking your phone? You mad? What are you doing? Maybe. Were you trying to hide things from me? No. Probably. Probably. You think so? Probably. You think so? I don't know. Do you want to get on my phone and look at stuff? I don't know. Should we talk? <laughs> Do you want to get on my phone and look at stuff? Not really. You know what I'm up to. Yeah, I know. Because your phone will play your, your car will play your porn for you. Oh, stop it. Take it easy. Take it easy. I saw a thing the other day on Reddit where somebody was saying that they, every porn video should begin with five seconds of music. Uh, like a very specific music so you know and you have time? Yeah. And XKCD was talking about how when you go to play a video and he did a timeline for the video starting. It's like video loading, video hasn't starting, video is buffering. And the entire time the volume buttons are ringer, 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 ringer. And then as soon as the video starts, then all of a sudden the volume buttons are for volume. So it's like you can never turn down... A your volume on your phone in anticipation of a video about to start, but we all know what he's talking about. He's talking about porn. That's talking about porn. He's talking about porn. Yeah. Is this a problem you even identify with the volume and the ringers and stuff? Not really. Everybody else knows what I'm talking about. Not Everybody really. Else. I mean, I have I have my volume to zero, uh, my ringer off, and just the phone set to vibrate at all times anyway. Because otherwise, I get super confused whenever I hear your alerts go off. I'll yeah. check my phone, and so if mine is just silent and on vibrate. One, I don't worry about it. Two, I don't pay attention to it. And you know what? Ignoring all my alerts makes me a happier person. It, bo it bothers me when you don't text me back. Really? I, it, it frustrates me. It frustrates me. Because it's always like I, I don't text you unless I need something. It's like we don't, we don't sit there and text all day. We see each other so much. Shouldn't you be happy that I'm enjoying my life rather than living tied to a phone? Listen, I want you to enjoy your life to your fullest and all that stuff. But occasionally, I need some answers for something. You know what I mean? I just need to like, hey, I do this. What do you want for dinner? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to pick something up on the way home? Of course, then you'll tell me, yeah, pick this up, and then I forget it. Probably. Uh -huh. probably. Maybe. Or just... you'll or you'll pick it up and you'll eat it before you get home. <laughs> That's never happened. A bunch. <laughs> 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 happened once or twice. All right. Well, that's it. Ashley, thank you for joining me for a one-on-one -on -one podcast. As far as couple therapy goes, I think this was uh, we, think We've this had was worse ones. <laughs> I think we've had worse ones than this. That's for sure. How are we, we doing? We are we okay? Are we okay? I think we're okay. Yeah. You want to get married? What's that? Want to get married? Let's let's talk about it. Let's yeah. Talk, are you are you back on track with that? Do you want to? Because we we got engaged what a year and a half ago. We don't talk about it all that much. I don't know how to plan a wedding. What does that mean? I think I might buy a book. I don't know. I think you, but you can do you can plan us all this other stuff. It's just like you, we never like we don't have a date or anything like that. I'm not complaining. I was thinking, I'm just, I was thinking um, is our anniversary next year. What do you think? Our anniversary. What is our anniversary? It's the 23rd of September. Okay, that's good. Don't be a twat. <laughs> I was just seeing if, if you remember. So 23rd of September, 2018. Yeah, you want to get married? Uh, yeah. You want to put a date on the calendar? Let's, do, let's do this. All right. We all right. Everyone's got advice Look, on the wedding. Can we, can like, can we like, like, not talk about like, like venues and stuff like that? I, you know, what? I need, I need a checklist. They're talking about venues and centerpieces over here. We're getting all this centerpieces. advice now. Centerpieces. We I need. To Isn't pick this some like girls and horses? Something? Aren't you just like like genetically is like when the when there's a wedding, it's like you just like something kicks in. Isn't that happen? No. 
Is this gender? Is this sexist? I feel like you're making some assumptions. Well, I am. I am. I, but am I wrong? Also, between the two of us, you're the baby crazy one. I am the baby crazy one. I am the baby crazy so, one. So, you know, we're breaking all kinds of stereotypes here. I have no idea what to do about weddings, and, and you're cute and baby crazy. <laughs> I am. That's why when you asked me, do you want to get married? I paused because it's like I didn't want to get into that conversation. You want to have that conversation on the air? We'll have that one in the post show. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> That'll be a good one to have in the post show. Anyway, I think you're a great girlfriend. One of the things I love about you is that, uh, you know, I have, I think of myself as having a business brain, but an artist's heart, which, you know, makes me like sometimes I like get quick to get angry. You know, and then also my artist heart makes me kind of stupid in some cases as well. And you're very extremely patient with me. You've always been very patient and supportive of me. And I, I appreciate that. Well, that's profound and that's very sweet. Oh, well, you know, it's five years. Well, five years, right? Yeah. Five years since September 23rd. So congratulations to you. That's yeah. it. Yeah, pound it out. Yeah, you got, you got, you got Go five team. years with a dude who's third on your list behind Troy Baker and Ken Pereira. Thank you for joining us on the Thursday podcast. This is the last one for our summer of experiments of having an additional podcast once every week. If you liked, us, let, liked it, let us know, and maybe we'll figure out something else we can do. I would like to do the one-on-one -on -one format a little bit more. I'd like to do that instead of the game time thing that we committed to for mm -hmm. first week, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you for joining us tonight, and thank you for joining us every Thursday this past summer. Bye, everybody.